Vinyl community, welcome back to another Vinyl Finds. Hope you're doing really, really well. Today is Tuesday the 23rd of May. Um, I'm in the middle of packing for a very exciting um, trip. Um, I'm off to Canada and the USA for almost a month. Um, so I'll be flying into Vancouver and then working my way down the coast, um, going to um, Victoria for a little bit and then down to Seattle, down to Portland and San Francisco and then out of San Francisco. So um, I'm very excited. Um, we're doing some amazing driving down the coast as well as catching some trains and stuff like that. So um, lots of amazing uh, record stores in my very near future. Um, so it's very exciting. It's a, it's a bit overwhelming actually. There's yeah, there's a, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff for me to see. So yeah, really excited. I haven't been to any of those cities before. So yeah, flying tomorrow. So yeah, today is packing and I just felt like I wanted to get these records shown and filed away before I finished. So when I got back, no doubt I'll come back with a stack of records um, and the other ones are filed away. So yeah, that's, that's kind of that. Um, I'm very excited. I haven't had um, a month off work in about seven or eight years, so um, yeah, it's def definitely deserved. Um, but yeah, hope you're all doing well. Um, been watching bits and pieces. Oh, I should say also, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll catch up with a few current VC members and ex-VC members. Um, I've, I've lined up a couple of things, but um, we'll see how we go with that. That should be exciting. Um, speaking of, I just watched uh, Tom's Audiophile Zombies video um, and you know I, I kind of agree Tom over at High Rent District um, I'll put it here um, yeah I, I feel very similar I kind of just ignore the VC now or ignore what I see in the vinyl community because all I see is yeah people kind of using it f to try and make money or I'm not gonna say sell out but yeah, just, just become basically, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I, especially because of somebody, I show a lot of jazz and I've shown a lot of jazz for about, you know, coming up seven or eight years now. But a, as you know now, jazz is the, absolutely the cool thing in the VC. You know, you've got people with fucking names like Jazz Collector Master, Jazz Vinyl Vintage Records, Jazz Diggin', Jazz professors, I don't know, all these, all these like crazy names of like vintage wax jazz collector. Jet, I could go on forever. Um, and, and there's these people that are just, you know, there's either people that seem to just be paying crazy money for original blue notes, or the people that just kind of buy whatever tone poet that's coming out and talk about it, talk about the pressing but not about the music. Um, it kind of makes me sad, really. Um, it seems to be cool to sort of like piss your pants over a Tone Poet record or a f bloody audiophile thing. And these people are, you know, I've seen bits and pieces and they're just regurgitating whatever it says on the packaging or whatever whatever has been said in the hype sticker. Um, and I, I never get a, a sense of more of a wider knowledge of jazz or how these records tie in together or anything like that. Um, it kind of makes me embarrassed to be somebody who is on YouTube and talks about jazz. Um, that this is what the vinyl community has turned, turned into, you know? Like, I, I guess there's been people doing this for years and we've all done a really good job of educating each other about jazz um, and I, you watched some of my early videos, I didn't know anything about jazz and I learned so much from a lot of you guys um, and I felt very supported and stuff like that but now I look at the people, a lot of the channels and it's just them pushing their own agendas, they're just buying a fucking expensive record and showing it off and there's no, there's no, doesn't feel like discovery, there's no one talking about the artists and the scene and how they play together and what they sound like and kind of the drive of the musicians, anything like that. Um, it's so weird, it just it just makes me sad. So I, I 
I just make vinyl finds videos because that's what makes me happy, that's what I like to do. I like to share and talk about them and talk about what I like about the records and what I've bought and why and I just leave it at that because <laughs> there's just so much shit out there, these audio fools, these jazz guys, ugh, it just, it just makes me sad. Um, just some, some of these channels and then you know there's, there's some people that I guess started with uh, you know have been around for a while and are now kind of deciding that they're going to become some sort of vinyl influencer and really upping their content and their quality and stuff like that like I, I remember you guys if you've been you guys have been around for a while remember there was a time when I did I tried an experiment where I put a video up for what well, I did one video per week for a whole year and by the end of it I just felt like I was just soulless like I was being a zombie like I wasn't really sitting down and enjoy making the videos I was just doing it for the sake of doing it and like do these people really enjoy doing paid reviews like what are, what are you doing like just step back make a video when you enjoy it I don't know my, my philosophy has changed a lot um, I, I essentially use my channel just as an outlet for me to talk about music and it's I don't make these videos for you I make them for me like I don't know if that sounds narcissistic or something but it's it's the truth I just I make them because I like to talk about what I bought and I don't really watch that many other people's videos anymore um, and that's kind of the truth um, yeah so I, I don't know but you guys all, all listen and watch and I'm really thankful for that anyway that was a rant that I did not expect um, I have seen a few other people voice similar opinions in the VC lately um, I just feel like these people are giving jazz a bad name. <laughs> That's what I'll say. When I see some of these thumbnails and some of these names. There's one guy, what the fuck is his name? If I find it, I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the, uh, somehow on the screen because it is so over the top. The guy's like, welcome to the Duncan Jazz. Yeah, I spent $700 on this Bill Evans 9 LP box set that I will probably never listen to is it worth it should you get it yeah like like what are these people doing like is that is that really them are they being really true to themselves <laughs> I don't know I'm gonna stop now um, okay so the first find for me I think a lot of you will really like this and even people that aren't really into jazz would kind of like this and I stumbled upon it through Spotify um, and this is this record here. Um, this is the Misha Panfilov Sound Combo Days as Echoes. Now this came out in 2020 um, and it sold out immediately on Bandcamp. Um, look at that for a It's a lovely cover. I really like it. Um, it's the, the title's Days as Echoes and this cover kind of ties in. So what is this? I guess you would say this is Estonian jazz, but it's very dreamlike, it's very melancholic, um, has like a wistful kind of style mixed with easy listening or space agey, it's kind of a bit groovy, um, it's really really beautiful. Um, yeah, there's uh, synthesizers, electric and acoustic basses. Um, yeah, it's electric guitars. It's really, really beautiful and um, very almost, yeah, I guess wistful would be the way to describe it. I really, really like this. Um, but yeah, it came out in 2020 um, and it's just been repressed. This is the repress. So I'm really happy to grab a copy because I thought I'd missed the boat on this record here. Days is Echoes. Beautiful. Please check it out. It's, I'm not, I'm not um, selling it enough, to be honest. Um, so there you go, I was happy with that one. The second one was new to me, and I found it at a, I guess it was like a, a maker's market, or what do you guys call it, when there's people selling arts and crafts, and there was a couple of people selling records there. Um, and it was this record here. Chivo Barraro, Bonus Aries Blues. Um, and I skipped over it immediately, 
um, and after I went back through the um, crates, I look, I did have a look at the back, and I saw it said Jazz from Argentina, and I thought that's that's fantastic. I'm going to buy it immediately because there's some really killer um, Argentinian jazz records. Um, so what I did learn is this is a Catalyst, the U.S. Catalyst pressing, but originally came out on um, the Trova label from Argentina. Uh, under a different name, and it was called Blues Para and Cosmonaut, which is um, Blues for the Cosmonaut. So interesting that they changed the cover and they changed the name um, for it. But yeah, this this is uh, this is really fantastic. 1975. It's very strange. It's kind of spacey and groovy, and it start as the weakest track is is at the beginning, and then the record really opens up. Um, lots of uh, like Fender Rhodes Hammond organ. Um, electric piano and there's a xylophones going on um, really wonderful um, this is like a, a bootleg this is like a, a catalyst bootleg and um, I think the originals are very hard to find but yeah this was completely new to me Chivo Barraro Buenos Aires Blues fantastic now there is a what music uh, repress of this that I'm probably gonna look to get just because um, it'll probably sound better than this bootleg um, and I'm a big fan of the What Music label. If you don't know it, I don't think they're around anymore, but you know, from sort of like 2002 to about 2013, 14, they were putting out some really killer reissues. Things like the, the Open Sky Unit record is on that label. The Alberto Favera Sweet Train record is on that label, the reissue of that. The um, Jacques and Michelin Pelza records, which are killer, are on that. Um, and yeah, just, just speaking of Argentinian jazz, there's a record that I don't have that I would really like, and that's been reissued. Um, I'll put a thing on the screen. It's called Jazz Band De Free. Um, that is also on What Music. So if you, if you know any of these records, um, just just check out the WhatMusic.com. That's what they call their label. There's always some interesting stuff. It's kind of like a a sign of um, well, for me, if I see something that's been reissued on that label, I'm highly likely to uh, to grab it. And um, so sp speaking of what music, the next record I bought it from the same seller. The reason I bought it is because it's on that the whatmusic.com and this is a name that I had seen around a lot but I wasn't familiar with. This is Trajeto by Vito Assis Brazil. Um, and so this the seller said to me this this was a Latin sort of Brazilian jazz record. Um, and to a point it is, but it's definitely kind of more of a traditional jazz record. It came out in 1967, and it sounds like 1967, um, but you can tell that they're really influenced by what was going on in America. There's some songs, tr songs tracks that are very Coltrane-esque. Um, yeah, very, very safe. There's some tiny touches of maybe bossa nova or latin but in parts but overall it's a really really solid jazz record um yeah that's what i would say um victor assis brazil so this is 1967 um he does have a few things on on um that came out later um i wouldn't say this is something that you must get i think it's definitely worth checking out if you ever see it uh check it out online but um it was cheap and i gave it a go and uh i learned about it so that was kind of worth it Another one that I jumped out of my jumped out of my seat. I was already standing up. My heart skipped when I saw this next one, thinking it was an original pressing, but it's a kind of an unofficial bootleg thing that still sounds really great and I'm really happy with it. This has been on my list for a long time. This is Bobby Pornetto, Pornetto's Point. Um, this came out on Pathfinder Records, which is kind of like a private press um, label in 1975. Um, killer latin jazz record soul jazz record um it's a really fire record if, if you don't know it um check it out um i'm probably never going to get an original or will never pay for an original that much um so this will do for the moment yeah really fire record really good um yeah absolutely wonderful this was this was so cheap i was really happy um yeah Funky, groovy, Latin jazz. You, you kind of can't go wrong. Alright, we're getting into some slightly more heavy hitters. 
Um, what are we doing here? What's going on here? How long are we going for? Already? 15 minutes. Holy shit. Um, yeah, some heavy hitters. Now, I got really lucky and I bought something off Trade Me in New Zealand, which is kind of like our Craigslist of something that wasn't described very clearly or very well or in detail. And for, for the price I played for it, um, it's, it's an absolute bargain. And this is a record that, it's a jazz record and you would think that I would have had a copy of this by now. Um, this is Yusuf Latif Eastern Sounds. Now, I did, this was released last year on some sort of fancy audiophile thing for some crazy price. I didn't want to buy it, I didn't want to pay that much for it. Um, I decided to be patient. And this is was um, in the shrink. So as you can see, this looks absolutely, it's, it's unplayed basically. Um, and now it's not an original, but it is a um, pressing from 1972. Um, it originally came out 61 on Moods Full. This is a 72 pressing on Prestige, and it is absolutely perfect. Like, I don't think it's ever been played. Um, and I, I paid a, a very good price for it. Um, I can't believe no one else bought it, to be honest. Um, you probably all know this record. Um, a wonderful kind of melding of Eastern sounds, um, some Chinese instrumentation, um, looking East, uh, a, a real kind of cornerstone of um, the fusion of East and West in terms of, yeah, jazz, jazzy, cool, great stuff. Ama amazing, um, really restrained playing and parts as well. Um, yeah, the, uh, the bass work from Ernie Farrow, who I'm not really familiar with, um, is wonderful. Yeah, I kind of know this record inside out, um, but it's really nice to kind of have a copy on, on vinyl. Um, so yeah, that, that was a really big score for me. I was very happy with that. And um, from the same record fair that I talked about earlier, I did finally manage to find a copy of this McCoy Tyner Extensions record. Now, you all know this is a fantastic record. Um, absolutely wonderful. This is kind of a... him going back to like a spiritual jazz kind of thing. Um, this was 1972, um, around the time, I guess, he was heading, you know those milestone records that kind of had, you know, he had, he's heading in more of a fusion-y direction, but this is kind of a step back to a, a more of a restrained spiritual jazz record. You've got um, Alice Coltrane on here, Gary Bartz on here, and Wayne Shorter on here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, Tyner was at the, in the prime of his life, you know, and the, the height of his musicianship, and it, it's really cool to see him come back and, and do a spiritual jazz record. Now, the cover, as a graphic designer, this is really strange to me. So this is obviously a, it's not a ripoff, but they've obviously been inspired by National Geographic, which is interesting. Um, and so I, when I posted this online, someone said that, you know, they're kind of exploiting these people here by putting them on a cover. Why would you put, um, these people on there to make money? And someone else said, oh no, this is representative of the music and it's an acknowledgement of these people. Um, and it's, it's kind of going back to his roots. And someone else said, well, in 1972, um, Blue Note had been taken over by United Artists. Um, I think this is an exploitation of these people. Um, and I really didn't know how I felt about it. So I, I, I kind of did some digging around to see what I could find. And not much really. No one really talks about why this cover was chosen or what reason it was. Now, interestingly, two things I noticed. Um, the person who did the graphic design is this dude here. And the person who I think um, did the photography is here um, and at the time I think Blue Note was yeah, United Artists had were putting out the Blue Note stuff and they were kind of pushing in a different direction. There's a few other albums that came out around this time that have a different feel to them and also this has the next point I thought was this has never been reissued ever which is really strange this is dying for a reissue and I find it odd that no one has reissued it or really talked about reissuing it. Is the cover 
you know, one of those things that they don't, they don't want to touch. You know, I, I, I don't know. I also looked through my book, which is the Blue Note Uncompromising Expression book, which goes through every, pretty much every key major Blue Note record um, right up, you know, to the 90s, and there's no mention anywhere of this album at all. Like, there's not even a, a mention of it. Um, there's a list of Tyner's discography in there, it doesn't mention this record, which is crazy considering the lineup. Um, I don't know, it's odd. Why, why would they not include this? Because it's an amazing record. Um, so yeah, I really don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a very unusual, unusual thing, and I still don't really know what to think about it. Um, yeah, is, is, it expo is it exploitation or is it representation? If you have any thoughts, let me know. Okay, we are getting there. Um, thank you for sitting through this longer than normal video. Um, I've got a bit of time, so I thought I'd, you know, spread out a little bit more. Um, I'll go through this one quickly. Sons and Daughters of Light. Um, this is the Love and Hate Repress. This is a 1978 record. Um, this is a 1999 reissue. Um, Sons and Daughters of Light were a band formed in Oakland, California. Um, this is kind of a heavy, heavy funk, soul, jazz record. Would you call it rare groove? Something like that. Um, amazing, amazing vocals. Powerful bass lines. Um, yeah, kind of a mixture of spiritual and political going on here. Um, yeah, this is really fantastic. Um, very heavy on the vocals is what I'll say. Um, so if you're into vocal jazz, this is kind of what, you, what you're into. Yeah, really good, really good. I imagine originals are kind of impossible to find. Okay, three, three more, and then I will leave you in peace. <laughs> okay, this is one that I would never pay a lot of money for, but I, I got it really cheap on um, through a Facebook group here in New Zealand. Um, the guy was basically given it, given it, for free, I think for a dollar, so he sold it onto me for a little bit more, but um, you know, still way, 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 way under what it goes for on Discogs. Um, this is the first Tully record, um, self-titled. Now Tully, I've talked about in the past. Um, I've shown their um, Sea of Joy record. Um, this is their debut. Um, lovely original Australian, I guess you would call it Australian psych. Um, it kind of leans more in parts, more of a caravan vein, or or sort of has some of those soft machine Robert White sensibilities in terms of like obscure or you know strange, funny sentiments or words, um, a little bit cheeky, a little bit funny in parts, a little, you know, a few lines that make you think here and there. Um, is it a good record? Is it a great record? No. It's very patchy. There's some really nice moments and some pretty terrible stuff. I think Sea of Joy is far superior. Um, but, you know, a, a, as an important piece of Australian psychedelic music, um, it's, de it's definitely there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm still happy to have it. It's definitely a keeper. Um, again, I would never pay, you know, the $100 plus that it's going for on the internet. Um, yeah, Australian psych. I guess you'll call it that. It's probably not psych. It's probably like, it's just like a weird pop rock 70s record with psychedelic influences in, in it, I would say. It's definitely strange. I'll definitely give it that. Okay, another sip of coffee, sorry. Now, um, the last two. This is a record that you may know just from the cover. This came out in 2022. This is Hellfire by Black Midi. Um, I kind of missed this band last year when they came out. There was a lot of hype around them. And I don't know what I was doing, but um, hype sticker went over my head. Um, and I sort of was listening to them on and off towards the end of last year and early this year. Um, and I kind of thought there's something there, but they're also a little bit all over the show. 
Um, I still do think that they're about maybe one or two albums away from putting out something really, really special. Um, but I did pick this up because I caught them live um, a month or two ago and they absolutely blew my mind. Like the performance, the musicianship was out of this world. I haven't seen anything like it in a very, very long time. Um, yeah, kind of, they really do it well live, like really, really well. I think the records are a little bit patchy. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, the, the records are kind of patchy. But what, what is it? I mean, if you don't know what this is, it's kind of like... <laughs> theatrical... It's, it's like prog. It's like King Crimson, but modern and heavier and has theatrical elements, but it's not like fucking shit porcupine tree prog. It's like... I guess I would say if you like... Maybe like... If you like Mr. Bungle, and you like Primus, you probably would be interested in, in Black Midi. Um, yeah, really cool artwork too. Um, amazing musicians. There we go, I don't know. Do, do listening yourself. I'm sure a lot of you know Black Midi anyway. I think they won a bunch of awards maybe last year in the UK. Okay, now the last one is a, um, a Beast of a Record box set. Now, this thing came out in 2017. Ta-da! This is the... Yeah. This came out in 2017, and when it did, I, li I liked Huskadoo. I had a couple of their records, but I didn't really go that much deeper, and I, d I kind of was interested in it because I know Numero Group do an amazing job with their box sets. Um, but I didn't want to spend the money to get it, um, especially because, you know, that band, if you're getting into them, you want to start, you know, around flip your wig kind of thing. Um, but this came up on our local trade me here for like a ridiculously cheap price. It was a sealed box set. Um, the guy must have just had doubles or something, wanted to get rid of it. Um, so I snapped this up straight away. I only got this a few days ago, so I am working my way through it. This is the Savage Young Do box set. Um, it basically just um, spans the first four years of the band from 1979 to 1983. Um, there's live recordings, demos, um, some remastered, there's a remastered version of... Um, Everything falls apart. Some alternate takes. Some, I, you know, I haven't got obviously got through the whole thing, but there's some really interesting. You know, there are a lot more fierce and a lot more fast here, but there's some really nice, interesting pop elements mixed through it. Um, it so it's it's a four LP and comes. You know, this is this artwork is amazing. It comes with this amazing, amazing hard book here that I need to sit through and read through. Um, I'll show you some of the fantastic covers here. This is the uh, live version of. Land speed record. Uh, everything falls apart. Really cool. I um, I've been a fan on and off through the years. Um, there's still records, the classic records that I haven't heard yet by them. I'm not a super fan. I am a beginner to medium level level. I'm above. I'm above beginner definitely. I mean, I've got about four four of their records. Otherwise, that I really love. Um, I want to have celebrated summer for me is just just a magical tune, absolutely magic. Um, yeah, so I've got a lot of listening to do, a lot of exploring to do with the box set. I'm really looking forward to digging into it. Um, but there we go. Yeah, thank you, thank you for sticking around. If you're here to the end, we're almost at the half an hour mark here. So apologize, I apologize for that. I've done a lot of talking. Um, but I'm gonna go, I'm probably not gonna film for my trip. I kinda wanna just focus and enjoy the moment, you know? Um, yeah, I, I kinda have my record stores locked in that I'm gonna check out. Um, it's exciting, it's exciting. All right, thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the rant at the, you know, at the beginning of the video, I kinda had to get it off my chest. <sighs> all right, I will see you all, who knows when. Bye-bye.